Hi there, and welcome back to another episode at Station Road. Slight change of scenery today. Uh, now, we're in here in my office. Um, by day, I am a uh, graphic designer um, slash web design, and uh, I basically operate by myself. I uh, have my own uh, design studio, uh, which is called Jalum Design, and well, there's a logo up there on the wall. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been running my own sort of small uh, design business for the last three or four years now, and um, I have clients peppered uh, all over the world. Now, um, one of the benefits of uh, being in the graphic design industry, of course, is that I have some reasonably, um, well, professional software to play with, uh, which uh, also I use for my model railway. So um, as luck would have it, uh, in regards to a continuation of this uh, road marking video, uh, which I'm now uh, going to extend a little bit further from last week's video. Um, I have set up some uh, road marking designs on Adobe Illustrator. So, and everything is set to scale. So, um, you know, I, I do realize that there's uh, a lot of uh, uh, model railway folk out there that will not have access to such software. Um, there is obviously some open source or free uh, uh, software available for basically designing this type of thing and printing it out. Um, so what we have here on the screen, and we will actually just bring up a screenshot of what we have. So in Illustrator, um, I have designed up a uh, zebra slash pedestrian crossing um, which is based on and I'll just flick over to another screen some UK traffic sign uh, snippets from a manual from uh, I think well we've got here 2009 so you can actually get access to these and I downloaded this as a PDF which I then transposed into Illustrator uh, and then worked at scale in terms of OO gauge. And, you know, the brilliant thing about um, this uh, UK traffic manual or signs manual is um, all the dimensions are included. So it is actually really quite good. Now, um, this is from Wikisource. Um, it just was one of the first searches that came up with Google so uh, this is where I've got it from but I'm sure it's possibly maybe available through other sources as well. And so heading back to uh, the Illustrator screen we have um, well on the left hand side is more of a Illustrator view of how it would look and then on the right hand side we've just got an outline uh, version which is the version that um, I'm printing onto this label paper. So here we have a printed out crossing. Now um, I've just chopped this up and uh, it was from an A4 sheet of this uh, label paper. Right, so we'll just uh, uh, show this up a bit closer. So here's our um, printed out uh, template, which is um, on this uh, label paper. Um, here in New Zealand, um, I've just bought a brand, it's called Impact. Uh, not sure whether this is available anywhere else around the world. Um, I don't think it possibly is, but I think um, like a, another big key brand is Avery. Um, they they make the sticky label paper as well. Um, and uh, this is just A4, but um, obviously if you're in the States, you're, you're going to have legal or letter size. Um, and, um, and I was able to print two up of this, um, as you uh, probably have noticed, um, this was an A4 sheet that I've just simply split in half, 
And um, the reason why I've done two up is because the um, the whole pedestrian crossing uh, section that I'm actually going to uh, apply in front of the railway station is longer than an A4 sheet of paper. So I've had to, to actually do it in two halves and I'm simply going to uh, join it uh, through the middle here and um, and basically we've just got overlap that um, I'll trim back as required. So uh, so essentially that's the reason for this. Um, so I previously cut this one out just to see how it went. So um, really essentially the key here is to, um, well, I, I mean, I guess it's probably really not important whether you actually just cut all the way through, including cutting through the backing paper. I just kind of feel like if it's actually, if you only cut through the label and not through the backing paper, and you then you pull out each of the the um, the pieces, then when it comes to actually peeling off the backing and applying the sticker to your road surface, it might just be a bit easier. So uh, hence that's why um, I'm doing that this way. So um, anyway, what we'll do now, um, there's a couple of things that you could use. I mean, there's this knife here. This would be ideal, but unfortunately I don't have any new blades and this blade is actually quite blunt, so I'm not using that. But we do have just a smaller uh, craft knife, which I'm using, and this seems to be quite good. So, and of course a steel rule. And um, essentially we'll just go through this and trim all these lines and the idea really is not to obvious as well is not to uh, go beyond the lines as well so we're just going to do this example through here this pedestrian crossing uh, or zebra crossing stripes And I think when cutting this, you kind of you can kind of just feel where, whether you're going just through the label or whether you've actually gone through the entire backing. You can always check on the back. You see, I've gone through just a little bit too heavy, uh, and then just a pair of tweezers. And just pull pull it out, and there we have it. So, um, and your piece that you can throw away. Um, so yeah, that, that's the idea um, behind uh, this uh, template. So we'll finish that off. Um, don't need to show you that whole thing on screen. Um, now the next thing that I just wanted to have a quick look at, and we'll test this as well, and I've got the uh, sample board here. Uh, so that's our sample from last week's video. Um, we've got a chunk of this. Uh, tape so we're just going to stick a bit of this label on a strip of that and just test it for its now just the, the feel of that it does actually feel really quite sticky so I am really probably thinking that um, you would probably it would only this stuff would only be suitable if you were um, using it as a mask on a you know a sandy surface so either this um, example that I've got here or as some people pointed out um, people use um, sandpaper also as a road surface so um, which is you know I have actually used sandpaper before and yeah it is actually um, a good material to use that sort of kind of mimics uh, and, and makes a little bit more um, you know uh, tar seal asphalt like as opposed to just painting a road um, so um, but uh, I would say that this method would probably work with the sandpaper as well so I'm just gonna we'll just stick it down one edge just to see how it goes and I am gonna sort of apply you know quite a bit of pressure to, and actually push it down because it, it really does need to be you know pushed in um, push down onto the uh, rough cast surface um, in order to avoid any paint bleed um, although the, this will be actually dabbed with a sponge um, in sort of light coats but uh, yeah, if we give that a fair amount of pressure to uh, stick that down Oh, 
Right. So, um, yep, that, that stuck down. Now, um, uh, we could just imagine, you know, we're going to dabble paint in here and so forth. Um, we're probably not going to leave this on here for a great period of time. Let's just see if it pulls back okay. And, yeah, it just peels up. Um, it's bringing up a tiny little bit of sand, but really nothing significant. So that, you know, is just... You probably can't even see that little bits of sand on there. Um, so that tests the uh, the stick of this label paper, and it would seem, or it would definitely appear that this will be actually okay. So um, you know, I was um, thinking about you know doing this as a set of tests, um, these ones here, but I thought no, um, I'm not going to waste it. So we'll go ahead now and actually apply these templates to the actual layout in front of the railway station and uh, trim this all back and give it a go and see what kind of result we end up with. So I've just laid this out uh, roughly where it's going to go. One of the things I've actually noticed is, um, you know, I could have sworn I did the measurements accurately when I assembled this, this whole area and uh, the road is just slightly wider at this end than it is down here uh, so I've just had to trim uh, just a little bit here um, you know uh, just about um, there's always something isn't there but anyway um, it's not too bad um, this is just slightly running off the edge and um, well you know maybe this kind of happens in real life um, but anyway um, what we're actually going to do is position it about here so that's roughly where it is I've actually basically got that line there lining up with the edge of this wall here so I know where that that's going and then of course this one will position down now what I'm going to do before I actually stick this down is I'm just going to run a bit of the um, the uh, masking tape along the edge of this uh, guttering in here just so that we don't because the um, the sponge is actually going to get quite close to the edge of the pavement so I really need to mask that off as well but uh, anyway, we'll uh, get on and uh, do this and see how it goes. Right, okay, so that's um, that's the first one down. Now, you would have noticed um, in there, although it would have been incredibly speeded up, I actually, um, in order to um, get the backing off this, uh, turned it upside down and pe peeled the backing back, you know, only roughly about halfway um, at, while the backing was folded back on itself um, and, uh, and then applied the first half down and then slowly pulled the backing out uh, rolling it back as I went. So uh, we'll do this one and um, uh, same method of just peeling it back. So um, as I showed in the previous video, um, just some little blocks of reasonably dense foam and, uh, and basically some white acrylic paint. So um, we'll go over this and start dabbing this on and well, let's see how it goes.
Right, okay, so that is um, the paint dabbed on, and um, an interesting uh, point to actually note is uh, you do need to do it reasonably quickly, actually painting this on, because I've now noticed, and you certainly couldn't go back over it again now, is the moisture in the, uh, in the paint is actually starting to ripple the actual um, label. Um, you know, being a paper uh, label, um, I guess that's the thing, is the moisture in the paint is actually starting to ripple that. So I think what I might do, I'm going to actually take this stuff off um, pretty much straight away, but I might just go over it just very quickly with a heat gun just to dry it off a wee bit. So here we go, the moment of truth. And, well, it's sort of kind of successful. Um, it's not as good as what I was hoping it to be. Um, there, there is actually, it has, you know, regardless of how much I pressed it down, it has created, um, there is a little bit of bleed um, and so forth on some of these lines here. Um, but it's, it's sort of, it's more or less kind of worked. Um, but um, yeah, not as well as I'd hoped. Um, I'm actually going to, with some uh, sort of tones of grey, is actually go over it and, you know, uh, kind of touch this up a bit. Because otherwise it does look just a little bit too blobby in some areas. Some, some areas have actually worked out a lot better than others. So clearly in some places I just simply haven't really pushed it down, pressed the, the paper template down enough. So, you know, you can see there, Clearly, there's uh, a bit of blobbiness going on um, through this area. This is probably the worst area here. It's just along here. So um, I'm actually just going to touch that up with, um, block it out with a little bit of grey um, blend. Something that's sort of going to closely match the, the road colour. Right, uh, so we're going to move on and do the parking area outside the station. And I've basically created another... Uh, paper template from sticky label so uh, hopefully this time we'll get a better result um, in terms of I'm going to put a lot more pressure at sticking the label down and um, also actually one thing that I did actually realize when I did the pedestrian slash zebra crossing I thought I had actually cleaned off all the loose sand and grit but uh, I actually hadn't so that could well be one of the main reasons why we had a bit of paint bleed so um, doing this one here, I'm sort of thinking how the best way of actually sticking this down, because, you know, there's some quite large splits in here. I could imagine if I just peeled all this backing off in one go, I'd end up in an absolute shambles. So um, what I've done is actually just peel back the first section of the uh, backing and uh, folded it back on itself. And so what I'm doing is actually all these f basically sticky flaps uh, going to um, go down first and then slowly peel the backing back so hopefully this is actually going to work uh, essentially what we've got here is we've got uh, well there's going to be one two three four five six parking spaces and then this is going to be a yellow line here and this could either be a loading area or possibly even motorcycles just because of the the unusual shape of the uh, pavement so uh, let's see how this goes
right okay so there we go now i put a huge amount more pressure on that so it's taken a bit longer to sort of get this um down because i'm sort of pressing it down you can actually start to see the granules of the sand um you know forming on the surface here so i hope that that is going to be more satisfactory so uh, we'll now just go ahead and dab paint on this so these ones here are going to be just the standard white stripes and then this section here i'm going to do with the yellow That is definitely has actually worked a bit better. So this one here has got a bit of bleeding going on, but um, it, the yellow's actually come out very nice and sh uh, quite nice and sharp. And this one here, slight bit of bleed. So uh, there we have it. So for all the other lines that uh, need to be applied to uh, this road, I'm just simply using the uh, masking film here, masking tape, and just simply, you know mapping out where lines are going to go so i'm just going to make this a solid single yellow line um, and the same for around here so all the rest of the um the lines around the edges and also around here i'm just using this uh, rather than uh, the paper template it's just easier i think so uh, we'll put some yellow paint down on this and uh, see how this goes And as you can see, you know, with, with this stuff here, you do get a much better better finish than you do with the um, paper label material. So um, we'll carry on and I'll do all the other yellow lines. And then once this is all dry, um, I will be doing a touch of weathering just to dull down the brightness of the yellow and the white. Then we'll see how it all looks. So uh, there we have it. Uh, the lines marked out on this section of the road and just simply using the masking tape there and then our larger tape for just blocking up the larger areas so um, as you can see here that uh, the orange tape with a little bit of encouragement can actually be sort of forced around corners probably i mean you wouldn't be able to get around very sharp corners but it certainly worked i think okay in this situation here so uh, we will now go ahead and dab some yellow paint on this section and uh, pull it up and see how it looks So we've now um, got all the lines down and I have started doing a bit of weathering. So initially I sort of thought um, I'd uh, use some weathering powders and I did this wee test on the uh, sample that I did in a earlier video. And yeah, the weathering powders aren't working terribly well and it's mainly because, because the, um, they're, they're sort of the powders are in, embedding into the grit and not actually spreading terribly well so they were out I thought what's what would be the next thing and I mean unfortunately I don't have um, like uh, an airbrush unit or anything like that I mean airbrushing some weathering might uh, might be quite a successful way of doing it but uh, what I've actually found is um, using watercolor pencils and I found a tone that's quite uh, quite suitable and I simply just what I'm doing is actually just drawing the color pencil on, and I'm mainly focusing in the, in the um, on the um, paving edging um, in the gutter, 
area so um, where there would be generally usually be more grime and dirt and then once in there using quite a stiff bristled brush uh, is um, essentially just going along and brushing the excess out and at the same time it's also sort of working it in and and blending the uh, the grime into the uh, road surface plus also the uh, road markings so that seems to be uh, quite a good result so uh, we'll just uh, do, I'll just do this side here I have I'm not doing this area here yet because I'm just still waiting for paint to sort of harden properly uh, but uh, we'll just go over the this side of the road as well and uh, and you can see how it sort of blends in so I usually sort of um, right on the edge of the road um, I sort of put on you know put a reasonable amount of pressure on the on the color pencil and really sort of quite heavily draw it in and as you work your way towards the middle of the road um, you can then take the pressure off the pencil and basically sort of it becomes lighter and lighter and as you can see I'm just sort of working it out into a lighter fashion towards the middle. Um, the only disadvantage of using this is you're going to go through your colour pencils like there is no tomorrow. Um, but um, I'm not too fussed about that. So uh, now with the stiff brush, we'll just sort of um, work this in. And um, most of it, you actually find, does actually come off. Um, but if it, even if you stipple it a little bit, that kind of tends to, it sort of presses the, basically the, the lead uh, shavings into the road surface. So here we have it, the completed road markings. So the colour pencil, watercolour pencil if method has definitely um, worked quite well in terms of the tones blending in um, and also dulling down the road markings a bit. So we've set it up with uh, um, a few of my favourite vehicles in the parking lot. Uh, we've got a couple of delivery vehicles in the loading bay and we have got a car waiting at the pedestrian crossing for the invisible man to walk across and somebody picking up or delivering some fresh produce to the farmers market and then it just sort of continues around there and that's of course as far as I've got so I think the uh, the road marking exercise has actually, in the end, or at least the end result, has come out okay. Um, yes, uh, it, in certain situations we had a bit of paint bleed, and uh, of course that needed touching up. But uh, otherwise, um, I think it has come out quite well. Right, well, um, I hope you found this particular episode um, of benefit or inspiration and ideas. Um, it was videoed as I went, uh, hence some of the dubious results, but in the end we got there. So the paper template method kind of works, but some touch-up is needed where paint has bled. So there we have it. Um, just also like to say uh, a huge welcome and also thank you to um, all the new subscribers that have come in over well the last few months and um, I'm now over well just ticked over 1500 subscribers now um, so yeah that's just um, 
absolutely brilliant. And uh, I certainly hope uh, for all my subscribers that uh, you're getting something out of these videos that I'm putting together, um, whether it be sort of ideas and inspiration and so forth. And also another huge thank you to all those who have left comments on my videos and offered their ideas and their tips. Uh, it has been absolutely brilliant. So I'll leave it there for now. And uh, as always, stay safe, everyone. And don't forget to, uh, well, like, subscribe and leave your comments. Bye for now. And I will see you next time.